our conference. Uh, welcome to the conference opening. Um, I'm very happy to see you here this morning. Uh, it's already the 25th time that we're gathering here at this conference um, to share our ideas, to share our findings, our research with other colleagues. I'm very happy to see a lot of faces that are familiar to me from the past years that I've been attending um, and uh, co-organizing this conference. I'm so happy to see a lot of new faces as well. I'm, um, I'm hoping that this year the conference is going to be as good or even better uh, than it was all the times before. And I would like to um, give word for opening the conference to the Dean of the Faculty of Informatics of Kolnas University of Technology, uh, Rita Butkiene, um, to give you a warm welcome um, to this conference. The floor is yours. Good morning. Dear Vice Rector, dear colleagues and participants of the conference, it's my pleasure to welcome you, all of you, to this conference, 25 International Conference on Information and Software Technologies. Welcome to our annual conference, which is a successful result of our cooperation with our institutional partners. Our biggest thanks to our sponsors, Lithuanian Research Council and our informational partner, Go Vilnius, who gave us a tow to Vilnius Catacombs for free. Dear colleagues, this conference focuses on promotion and development of interdisciplinary research, emphasizing combination of social and information technologies in the context of an information and knowledge-based society. This science event promotes cooperation with European and global scientists, with Lithuanian scientists, while seeking new opportunities for science, uh, joint science and technology development projects. I strongly hope that you will enjoy this event, which is a result of hard work of our organizing and program committees. I wish you will have time not only for scientific discussions, which uh, stimulate your ideas, new questions, maybe new answers, but also will develop new relationships for new joint projects and other fields of interest. Enjoy this event, have nice time and interesting cultural program tonight, and thank you all for being together. Thank you. A big thanks for our Dean for the warm welcome. Um, now I would like to give the floor to our um, Vice Rector for, um, for research, Dr. Leonas Balashevichs. Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, colleagues, good morning. It's my great pleasure to be here at the opening of the conference and to deliver you a welcome speech. As you know, the conference is organized by our biggest faculty of the university, Faculty of Informatics. It's not the biggest by the numbers of the students, but also one of the strongest faculty in the research, especially in the interdisciplinary research. As you know, and I hope you are going to discuss maybe in the, during the conference, after the presentations or even in the networking, events after party that today we are facing big challenges especially big challenges in the ICT sector 
Uh, as you know, the future trends are digitalization of uh, industry and uh, all society needs. One of the key values is that the citizens, they should feel what benefit the research brings to them. And these challenges which are related with digitalization focuses on the topics which I hope and uh, now are very good familiar to you. It's a big data, it's artificial intelligence, it's internet of things, and it's <coughs> high performance computing. So if we take separately every field, uh, okay, we need a lot of resources, not only technical resources, but also human resources and human capacities to be on the front edge of the future research. So very shortly delivering this speech, I hope that you are going to discuss the cooperation in these topics, future cooperation, because in Europe we are waiting for the new forthcoming program, it's Horizon Europe. There will be a lot of funding assigned to these topics and uh, I could warmly invite all of you around the world to join the consortiums for preparing the proposals for Horizon Europe programs. Konas University of Technology is the strongest university, even strongest institution in Lithuania regarding participation in the Horizon 2020 program. Currently, we are implementing 19 Horizon 2020 projects from the total what we have during the last five years, 32 projects. So, there is a network of partners, but we would like to enhance this network. Even keeping more that universities starting the new project, starting from the November 1st, it's, maybe as you know, it's European University project. Together with our partners, we are starting to bring the researchers together. Because as you know, there are a lot of populist movements in Europe regarding some separation, bringing the borders. So I think the digitalization or the topic of ICT is that topic, which is borderless topic. So from my side, I wish you a very productive meeting very good discussions and hope to see you maybe anywhere else in the projects meetings or even at Connors University of Technology. Good luck and thank you. Okay, thank you for, um, for the speech. So, um, yeah, now I'm gonna tell you some practical information about the conference. Um, as usual. So um, today we're working here in this hall, uh, listening to uh, hopefully very inspiring keynote speeches. And um, <coughs> after that, we have um, our uh, coffee breaks. Please note that our coffee breaks uh, take place inside the conference halls. Uh, outside the conference hall, uh, you can see a lot of coffee as well, but it's for other conferences guests. So <laughs> uh, let's not steal their coffee. Um, ours is here and then uh, tomorrow uh, it's in another hall as well. Okay, so we uh, um, wholeheartedly invited you to take part in today's cultural program. So the majority of you uh, registered and will be joining us in three uh, parallel um, sessions of uh, our cultural program. So one very, very important aspect that please, please, please note is that we leave um, uh, at 3 p.m. Not 3.30, but at 3 p.m. There will be two buses waiting for us outside the hotel, okay, at 3 p.m sharp please don't be late um, and then uh, for those who are not taking the conference bus the meeting point is in front of the cathedral at um, at 3 30 p.m okay so if you're not taking the bus uh, let's meet in front of the cathedral at 3 30 p.m and then uh, we're going to go to like three different ways uh, for our cultural program 
and then we're coming back to the cathedral and walking to the restaurant where we're going to have some uh, very nice dinner. And um, it's not a, uh, not a long walking distance from uh, the cathedral. You'll be, a you'll be able to see the wonderful view of the cathedral and cathedral tower uh, outside the window of our restaurant. And yeah, I guess that's it with the practical information. Uh, if, you, if you need an invoice, if you order the invoice uh, from Giedra, let me know or come to the registration table. We're going to give you those. If you need any stamp signatures on your papers, uh, we're also there at the registration desk uh, throughout most of the day. And if you have any questions, inquiries, whatever, uh, ask me or our supporting colleagues. Uh, we're going to try to assist you in any way possible. So I wish you to have a really nice, fruitful conference, um, have a great time, and I think we can start uh, with our keynote presentations, right? So our first keynote is Professor Dr. Robert Nowitzki, and he's going to <coughs> give a speech on rough hybrid decision making. So Professor, if you're ready, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for organizer to uh, invite me. Um, I would like to uh, to show uh, you some um, <coughs> presentation, some ideas. So, topic of of my presentation lecture is uh, rough hybrid decision uh, making. Um, I will not show any spectacular results uh, about the cognition of the object in the pictures, about the uh, control of the autonomic um, uh, vehicles and, and so on. Uh, I would like to, uh, to, to go to the low level of artificial intelligence and uh, show some ideas and uh, some idea and uh, and uh, the examples of uh, applying this idea uh, the rough uh, rough set uh, theory uh, is uh, very popular especially in Poland i come from Częstochowa University of Technology in Poland um, so it is very popular uh, topic um, um, i think the the many many sciences uh, in, in, in my country uh, as well as in the whole world um, work with with uh, rough set so I, I show uh, the, uh, the the one piece of the artificial intelligence uh, which I hope uh, will be interesting as a part of the biggest uh, systems as the um, as the uh, element of the more spectacular um, solution this agenda of, of the presentation at the beginning I will show uh, I, I will talk a little about the uh, few two, two peoples about two peoples uh, which are uh, the first of one is the author of Rafsa theory of course this is the professor uh, professor uh, uh, professor Pavlak uh, then I uh, I, uh, I, sh I show uh, a little um, selected information about the rough set theory. It's a not whole theory, but the only this element which is needed for the ITA, which I, which I uh, want to, uh, to, to show. Then uh, I show the idea of rough hybrid decision systems, and I uh, will show a few, uh, a few um, examples of such uh, system. And then I show uh, the two modes in which uh, these systems uh, could, in my opinion, uh, work uh, better, uh, better that in as, as the as the um, single as the single elements. And I will show uh, examples of the experiment results. Uh, thanks to this, uh, I show what is the effect of of working uh, this uh, group of uh, system. So, the professor Professor Jisław Pawlak uh, is a developer of the rough set theory. Um, uh, is a famous uh, Polish uh, science. Uh, this is a picture uh, 
from one of the lecture, invited lecture, uh, which has been made uh, by uh, by Professor uh, Pavlak, uh, and uh, based on this uh, his uh, theory, um, our proposition is is based. Uh, it is also important. Uh, next photo. Um, this is the this is uh, Professor Lotfi Zadek, which is uh, the um, uh, author of. Uh, uh, fuzzy uh, sets and uh, fuzzy logic uh, theory and some parts of our proposition my proposition is uh, uh, joined also with uh, with uh, fuzzy uh, fuzzy set um, the uh, these two pictures are in fact one picture it was a special occasion it in 2002 in uh, in Zakopane, in fact, in Kościelisko, but uh, in, in Zakopane was a, a sixth conference, and these two, uh, two, uh, two professors meet in the one, uh, one uh, place. Uh, so I think it's a very special, uh, special, um, uh, special photo uh, from, from this uh, conference. Uh, both theories uh, have been uh, combined uh, by uh, Dubois in at Prada, um, to the professors, to, to scientists, uh, they make the um, uh, fuzzy rough sets and rough fuzzy sets, which will be also applying in my uh, in my uh, proposition. Uh, this conference, uh, uh, neural networks and soft computing, uh, is still. Um, uh, Organizing, but uh, his name has been changed. Now it is the International Conference of Artificial Intelligence and Soft Computing. But in fact, this is the same, the same conference organized, but the, the same uh, people um, in the same uh, place, almost in the same place in 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 Zakopane. Um, in uh, Zakopane. So now, uh, rough set theory. Rough set theory. Um, in fact, not uh, in a natural, uh, but uh, I show only these elements which will be uh, important for, uh, for, for this presentation, for this, uh, for this um, uh, lecture. Uh, in uh, uh, rough set theory, we have defined information system and decision table, so we have some universe of the objects, uh, uh, and these objects are described uh, by values of some attributes. Uh, these attributes we can divide into the condition attributes and decision attributes. Uh, the attributes when we want to uh, want to um, create the decision table or rules, uh, because rules there are uh, other other uh, form of uh, decision table. Uh, and we have some domain of these uh, uh, attributes uh, uh, and information function which connect each other. Uh, so uh, this function uh, gives the, the value of uh, particular attributes of particular uh, particular elements in our uh, our universe. Uh, so this is description of our world, our universe. And we will work in in this uh, in this uh, in this space. And what is important uh, for uh, my uh, my presentation? Uh, in this world, this this world could could be not perfect, not not perfect. Um, we have limited number of attributes, limited set of attributes, uh, because uh, in fact every object in our uh, our world, uh, our real world, not not uh, not macro world, uh, could be described by unlimited attributes. Yes, um, every element, every piece of the uh, maybe not not piece, maybe every 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 uh, thing, every object, it can be described by size, color, temperature, uh, and so on. We can uh, adding uh, the new attributes, but. In fact, f in for practical solution, uh, the number of attributes which are under our uh, consideration is always limited. It is limited uh, because we have limited uh, 
limited uh, capacity of memory, uh, limited number of input of our system, uh, limited time to describe and analyze uh, the system, so it is uh, limited. Uh, sometimes it is limited for one element. So we assume that uh, we describe uh, some uh, object in our universe by set of, uh, set, by, by set of the attributes, but uh, some elements are not available. So uh, attributes is defined, uh, but uh, but uh, values is not available. Uh, so we're talking about the missing value, missing missing features uh, sometimes. Uh, these uh, values could be also imprecise and untrusted. Yes. So the our 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 universe uh, in real, uh, in real life is imperfect, uh, and we have to fight with this imperfection. Imperfection. Uh, so in this uh, in this uh, universe we can define this type of uh, this type of uh, imperfection of uh, of the uh, data. So this is <coughs> this is uh, our world, our universe on the right. Uh, on this universe we have point, element, object of our uh, system, um, and uh, sometimes our description uh, goes to the uh, to the generating the uh, some atoms. Uh, for example, when we're talking about the cars. Uh, we can see it's a red cars with four doors. Yes, it's in fact not description of the single car. It's a description of the the set of of the car. Uh, so, uh, in based on this description, many cars are uh, uh, equivalency. Yes, uh, are description in the same way. Uh, so, uh, this description is defined by the relation in, the, in, in this scalability relation, which could uh, divide our universe into the atoms, into the atoms which are uh, described in the, same, in the same way. There are some examples uh, of the dividing into the, uh, the, the our uh, universe into the atoms could be in this way, in this way, in this, yes, in this, or this, it all depends of our uh, our uh, equivalence uh, uh, relation. Yes, we can define any any relation. And the first uh, type of um, um, imperfection, limited set of on consideration attributes. Uh, the picture is limited to to size, to to uh, to dimensions. Uh, but uh, in this example. Uh, our number of, uh, of or set of, of uh, considered attributes is limited only to one, only to to this. So information about the uh, vertical uh, vertical attributes is not available in general, not for single single uh, element of our universe, but in general in this universe, this uh, information is not under consideration. Is not considered. So our space is changing to this situation. And so every line, every vertical line is an atom. Is an atom is a set of uh, uh, of the elements which are not um, not uh, uh, discriminating uh, each other. So this is the case. So in fact. We have uh, the uh, we, we have limitation to the in this case a single single dimension. But in real situation, we don't thinking about the two dimensions. We are thinking about the hundreds and thousands dimensions, and we limited our space to the lo lower and uh, lower uh, number of dimensions. Of course, not from two to one, but from uh, five hundred to the four hundred, uh, for example. Uh, so. Uh, we limit uh, limit uh, them. Um, so uh, the uh, Rafset theory describes this as uh, atoms, as the uh, equivalence uh, class. Uh, this is uh, other situation, uh, but uh, the other group, other one, uh, other one dimension is 
um, is um, available. Is um, available. Um, we have also other situation when uh, we consider it some set of uh, attributes, but for one particular uh, object, for one particular object, this red, one or more uh, value is not available. Then this description not not describes this single element. This single element, uh, uh, the red, red, red dot, but the description change uh, this one element uh, under, under consideration to the uh, to the atom to the equivalence class, which is defined as a line. As a line, the line is in fact uh, limited because uh, we have domain. We have usually domain uh, defined dom domain of uh, particular uh, of particular um, uh, attributes of particular. Um, uh, values, so it is not uh, uh, absolutely absolutely uh, unknown value that uh, we know that if it's for example temperature of the of the uh, human, um, uh, uh, it's uh, limited be between uh, with between some value and and some uh, some value. But from the uh, from the uh, rough set theory. We can think about this description about uh, as a new atom, new, new atom, new equivalence class, which could be analyzed in the uh, in the uh, in the um, classification uh, system. Other example, uh, a very similar, also missing value. So one point uh, come uh, uh, into the into the uh, line. Other, uh, this is uh, interval value. So uh, we have no exact information about the uh, value of attributes, but we know that it is between uh, some value and some value. So also in this case, uh, our point is changing to the uh, to the uh, to the class, yes, to the equivalence class, because this description without uh, not without when we change one value into the interval, uh, is changing to the to the set. It's the set of many of many of many <coughs> values. So this is equivalence equivalence class which we should uh, analyze uh, in the classification uh, classification system. Of course, not only one value uh, could be uh, could be um, interval in form of interval. Uh, also, uh, other value, or even more than one value, could be uh, could be interval. Uh, so, uh, in all these cases, we change our description from the one one element to the to the equivalence uh, class. And when we analyze, when we try to classify uh, this uh, uh, this uh, input information, we have to think about all elements in this in this uh, equivalency class because this is a description not of uh, one element but uh, but uh, this is a description of uh, whole elements uh, in this equivalence uh, equivalence class um, uh, the rough set theory defined the lower approximation and uh, upper approximation of the class based on equivalence uh, based on the uh, approximation approximation uh, um, universe so when we uh, have some um, method of dividing our universe into the atoms, uh, we can, uh, based on these atoms, approximate our, our uh, class um, uh, using the lower and upper approximation. This, um, uh, this element on the picture is uh, our class, is, is our class, and when we uh, add some dividing into, into atoms, we obtain the uh, the lower approximation. The lower approximation uh, is also called uh, positive region of class X. is uh, make, uh, is 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 signed by the uh, blue uh, blue blue region. Uh, uh, we can uh, also uh, obtain the upper approximation. It's uh, all uh, all fields 
which are not uh, not white. This, this is the uh, upper approximation. Um, uh, we can also define de define what is very important negative region. It is uh, the white space space of the of the uh, picture and Bondouari region. Bondouari region uh, is uh, the um, uh, is the this region which are uh, gray and 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 green. So, uh, when in fact, uh, the elements in the positive region. Uh, this is information that we are sure that object is in the class. Yes, it's not important um, in w in which uh, position on the atom uh, this object is. We are sure that uh, is in the class. Uh, so it's a, a, a sure classification. When uh, object is on the uh, atoms which are signed uh, colored by white we are sure that it's, uh, this object is not in the class. But in case of the Bondouari region, uh, we in fact don't know uh, what is the proper, uh, proper answer, pro proper, uh, proper cl classification, uh, classification result. But in fact, it's a very important information. This, info, uh, this is information for the user or for the system. That description, the current description of objects are not enough to make sure classification. Uh, and uh, we should do something, add the information, uh, add the more, uh, more strict information uh, to make the, uh, the, 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 the result. Uh, but for some uh, some uh, elements uh, which are on the positive or negative region, uh, current current description is absolutely enough uh, to make the uh, to make the uh, proper uh, proper decision. And a few other examples when uh, when we have other uh, atoms, other uh, interdescribility relation, so we obtain uh, different uh, uh, dividing. Um, and dif dif different effect of our uh, our um, uh, approximation, lower and upper uh, approximation. Um, this is uh, uh, square uh, atoms uh, in this uh, bigger square, or in case of the um, missing uh, missing values or limited uh, limited uh, um, uh, value effect. So we have the lower approximation. Uh, we have uh, the, the 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 upper approximation is exactly uh, like in the uh, exactly uh, equal to the our universe. Uh, this is uh, other example. In this case, uh, in this case, uh, we have the lower approximation, which is defined, and uh, the upper approximate approximation is uh, not. Uh, not equal to the universe uh, because uh, some part of our universe belongs to the negative mm -hmm. negative region of, of our class. Um, negative, uh, yes. So, uh, this is other example. In this case, uh, the lower approximation is uh, empty, uh, but the our upper approximation uh, uh, is uh, a whole uh, universe, so it's a very bad, uh, bad situation. Uh, so the description uh, do not, uh, uh, not not giving uh, for us uh, any information, uh, which is uh, um, which could be used for classification. And now we uh, come to the uh, to the rough hybrid decision system. When we have the some approximation space, and we have the some description, uh, which is connected, absolutely connected with the approximation space. Uh, moreover, our description um, um, define uh, define our approximation space. Uh, we could uh, build a rough decision system, a rough hybrid decision system. So we have available free answer. So our input description, so the input description is not description of the particular object in fact, 
uh, this description of the atom, which representing, uh, which representing uh, this, uh, uh, which is representing by the element, which is, uh, uh, which is, which description is given on the on the input of our system, um, and uh, we know that this description is could be imperfect, could be imperfect, uh, so we could obtain free result of the uh, decision system. Uh, the, decision, uh, the first uh, case is that the, the input description belongs to the positive uh, region of the, of the X. Of course, uh, with, uh, with defined description, yes? Uh, the second is that uh, uh, belongs to the Bandubari region. So, in fact, we don't know what is the result. Belongs to X or to, to, to the object, uh, to the class X, or it uh, belongs or, 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 or not. And the last uh, available solution is, uh, uh, mm, is, is, that, uh, is the input decision, input information belongs to the negative region. So we know that, uh, that uh, the uh, object described uh, on, the begin on, the, on the input of the system and uh, whole atom um, not belong to our, uh, our, uh, our object. Uh, so we can obtain this uh, this free uh, result. Uh, the special uh, the special uh, group of the rough hybrid decision system are the uh, interval rough hybrid decision uh, system. In this case, uh, we describe uh, the input uh, information as the intervals. Of course, the intervals could al also represent a single value, but in general, there are intervals. And we obtain the, uh, some intervals of the, on the output of our um, uh, rough hybrid decision system. And then, uh, and, uh, then this uh, interval of the output, on the output of the interval uh, rough hybrid system could be re should be re re reduced to the one of three uh, available uh, answers. Uh, this is... Uh, possible values of the output. It could be defined, from, for example, from 0 to 1, but it's in fact not important. It could be any, any level. Uh, we can define two thresholds uh, um, for uh, positive answer and uh, threshold for negative, uh, negative answer. And uh, when we can obtain money case of the of the of, um, interval of the o on the output of uh, uh, interval rough hybrid decision system when is like this the answer is uh, obvious yes uh, the answer is positive also in this case is positive these two elements could be defined in various ways it depends of the uh, of the um, uh, of, of the uh, person who, 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 who define the, the solution. Um, next and next solution uh, gives the answer that the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the atom, input atom, uh, belongs to the Bontuar region of object of class X. Uh, and uh, we have uh, four special cases. Uh, these special cases, these three special cases, uh, when output is the not uh, interval, but is a single value. It could obtain <coughs> only when uh, on the input of the system we have also not intervals but the single values. Uh, so um, interpretation of this uh, of this value is uh, simple. Uh, object object uh, belongs. Uh, object not belongs, or we don't know. Uh, and the last special case is when uh, on the output uh, we have uh, missing all possible values. So, um, and we give the, um, uh, the, in fact, no information on the input of the systems, we obtain no information of the, uh, of the output of the system. It means all is possible, yes? So, when we don't know nothing uh, about the 
about the input system, we obtain, we don't know nothing about the end of the uh, system. So it is also information that the object belongs to the to the Bondubari region. Uh, so this is uh, absolutely lack of knowledge about the system. Uh, we can of course slightly uh, make uh, uh, change and, uh, an and analyze and build the simplest solution when uh, the both thresholds are equal so the number of, uh, of the um, cases is less so it is uh, more simple and in fact this, this solution is usually um, uh, usually uh, applying. So we know that object belongs to the to the uh, to the uh, ob class X. Don't not belong. We don't know. Belong to the positive region. Uh, we don't know. But this is uh, uh, almost not possible situation in fact in real life. Um, and uh, uh, not belong or we don't know we don't know nothing about the about the uh, relation between the input information and uh, and um, and the desired classes so uh, i would like to show some examples of of the uh, rough hybrid systems there are only few examples through ideas, but uh, I think it is uh, uh, maybe not easy, but uh, uh, but it is available to um, to um, use this uh, idea to to many other uh, classification systems. This is uh, rough neurophasic systems, Mondani type, um, classic Mondani type. I think uh, every uh, every uh, but they know how it how it works. It is realizing as a neurophasic systems. For two class, for m classes, first class, second class, and this uh, this is uh, of course interval uh, rough uh, uh, hybrid system. So we obtain the uh, not it's uh, it's a system w which gives the the value from some uh, some uh, <coughs> domain. Uh, we can adapt the rough fuzzy and fuzzy rough set. In this case, rough fuzzy rough fuzzy uh, sets which has been proposed in Dibua and, uh, by Dibua and, 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 and Prada. Uh, and uh, on the left side we can see the description uh, of the uh, missing one value. We have the, some fuzzy, fuzzy sets defined in two, uh, in two, uh, in two uh, dimensions. Um, it is built from, uh, as a, a Cartesian product of, from uh, two uh, two fuzzy, uh, fuzzy sets, uh, two fuzzy sets, and then uh, one value, value v one is missing, is missing. So we can reduce this, uh, this uh, uh, fuzzy sets uh, into the rough fuzzy sets. In fact, it's a form of interval, uh, interval uh, fuzzy sets. Uh, so we know that uh, uh, that the value. Uh, membership value uh, is between uh, lower uh, and upper value in this uh, set. Uh, of course, it depends on the uh, missing on the missing value, but we <coughs> we know the uh, the, the scope uh, of of the membership. So the left side, uh, the uh, antecedent part uh, of the uh, our neurophasic system, could be Described by, by uh, the two mixed systems. Uh, when we uh, compare the previous uh, previous uh, left side, we have the antecedent element uh, in this layer is a Cartesian product uh, for uh, for the first, second, and uh, last uh, last uh, rule. Uh, in this, when we when you when you applying the rough fuzzy sets, we uh, have uh, the uh, double uh, double element for uh, each uh, rules. 
the first case is a case of missing feature missing feature so instead of the uh, instead of the uh, missing value and membership we have the uh, maximum and minimum value of membership not minimum and maximum value of the uh, of the uh, input uh, input value but of the membership and we obtain lower and upper um, firing level uh, firing level uh, for particular uh, for part particular rules uh, this works in the whole scope of the uh, of our uh, of our uh, missing domain on the right side we can see similar uh, but uh, in case when the value is described by, by the interval so we obtaining the uh, supo, uh, supremum and infinium uh, value in this interval but it is not uh, supremum of the input value but supremum of the of the membership yes it's very uh, it's very important um, of this system um, i be back for this uh, slide for the moment uh, what about the monotonicity the monotonicity of this interval rough hybrid allow us to analyze only the borders of the atoms and borders of the moni monotonicity uh, parts of the of the rough phase rough hybrid decision system the monotonicity is very important for build this system and for analyze only the lower and upper without monotonicity in this um, small uh, pieces of uh, the systems it is not available with uh, without monotonicity uh, we have to analyze in fact uh, each element in the input interval so it's in fact uh, unavailable so we have to analyze all elements of our at atom um, uh, we can uh, multi imputate uh, all elements uh, thanks to monotonicity we can on, uh, only analyze the infinium and supremum and this infinium is very important and this is consequent a uh, defacification part of uh, neurophasic systems rough neurophasic systems which is also uh, built as a pair for the first uh, first uh, for the first um, uh, class we uh, calculate lower and upper approximation of our output and this combination this combination uh, described on this uh, uh, on this equation uh, is for the obtain the monotonicity uh, monoton monotonicity uh, in this uh, in description of this uh, uh, region which is described by the by the atom this is the uh, one um, description this is the other uh, description this complicate uh, complicate shape of the of the uh, denominator uh, of this equation for lower and our approximation of our output is the effect of fight for the monotonicity yes uh, the um, um, the the theorem and the um, and the proofs of of this equation you can find in the um, in, in the in in the in, the, in my publications um, uh, but i think it's a little boring so i uh, not will show uh, this uh, this uh, this element uh, similar is for the different type of uh, um, of uh, implication and different type of the uh, of the defacification uh, which could be applying in the uh, neurophasic system phasic systems and of course in the rough neurophasic system so we can define also uh, this uh, uh, special uh, special version uh, a special version of description for lower and our approximation which gives our the monotonicity in in this particular element so thanks to this uh, thanks to this description we can analyze only the lower and our uh, uh, value of the membership uh, for the <coughs> for the system of course uh, for other example as implication and uh, 
uh, discrete center of gravity uh, defalsification uh, we obtain also more complicated uh, but uh, uh, in, in regular in regular uh, neurophase system we will have only uh, in fact this left left part without um, without um, um, without this, this, this element so <coughs> maybe I back to the previous <coughs> yes without uh, this rough uh, situation well, without this, this, this element without this element and this is not lower and, uh, and, and upper uh, value this is just, just, uh, just a value uh, but uh, when we need uh, uh, the, the interval systems and we need the uh, monotonity in the in these uh, parts of the uh, our universe uh, we describe this in this in this way and this is other case and other case yes another another uh, interval uh, interval uh, classification system is a neural uh, network um, of course uh, i think everybody know the uh, rough neural network proposed by uh, Pavan uh, Lindgras. This is the uh, on the left. This is part of his uh, first uh, paper about the rough neural networks, uh, just rough neural networks from 1996. Uh, and on the right is the uh, my implementation, uh, my description of this of the single neuron of the single neuron uh, which uh, um, comes from from this uh, from this from this picture i propose a little a little uh, make make a little changes in this model in this mo in this model in this way yes it is very similar we have the the switches the switches um, there are similar um, the, the 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 goal is similar like in the previous examples with the faster offset to obtain the mon monotonity yes when uh, when we, we have the lower and uh, upper value uh, of the input uh, input uh, um, information uh, into the neuron and that depends of the sign of the weight we uh, we get the upper or lower uh, in the opposite uh, opposite uh, way when we uh, want to obtain the lower output of the single neuron and in the opposite combination when the uh, when when we would like to to obtain the upper so from the interval inputs yes we obtaining interval outputs and thanks to obtain the monotonity uh, we we obtain we can analyze only the uh, the frontiers the the uh, of the of the atoms uh, the elements from the frontiers of the atoms not we have not analyzed any elements inside uh, each elements inside of the uh, of the atoms yes this is the monotonity rough net uh, of course in the same way very sim sim in similar way we can obtain the radial um, uh, neural network yes this is in fact the same neuron like uh, like before uh, but uh, without uh, without the um, uh, function or the uh, nonlinear function and the uh, radial function uh, neuron in the previous uh, in the previous layer uh, and we also obtain the monotonity so we can analyze uh, analyze the uh, system what is uh, what is important in this rough neurophase rough phase systems uh, and this neural network we can uh, applying knowledge in the form of rules in the form of phase sets in the form of weights uh, in the neural network uh, from the from the <coughs> normal not rough uh, systems so wh when you have um, uh, phase systems or neural networks um, regular which works uh, correctly uh, for uh, our universe we can um, obtain the same values of the uh, weights the same values of the uh, of the phase sets the same um, rules uh, and build the rough <coughs> uh, rough hybrid uh, hybrid system uh, to obtain the the value and the last example uh, of the rough hybrid the uh, 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 
Hey, neural, uh, hey, uh, nearest neighbor, 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 uh, neighborhood. Yes. So this is the traditional. We uh, define the uh, size of neighborhood. For example, five. We have the <coughs> element to classify. We have to find the five nearest uh, nearest neighbor and analyze the the class representing by this uh, this. Uh, <coughs> this uh, um, this uh, elements in in the uh, in the neighborhood. Um, uh, so uh, this is very very easy. But when we would like to generate the um, uh, create the the rough, uh, I propose to applying the rough fuzzy set in two steps in two steps in creating the neighborhood and in during the classification it is very complicated and time consuming um, uh, time consuming uh, solution uh, but i think it is proper one <coughs> let's see the this example in this example uh, we have the object not single point but we have the <coughs> i'm sorry but we have the the atom, uh, the class of object. <coughs> so, in fact, we don't know where is uh, when when uh, where is where is the object. The, the the real object could be in any position on this on this line. We don't know where, but we know that in this in this atom. <coughs> so. Uh, the distance, the distance, which is very important in uh, nearest uh, neighborhood, um, is not single value. Look for this point. This point the, the depends of the position of our real elements could be changed from this distance to to this dis distance. Yes, this is the lower one. This is the upper one, so distance between our object and this sample, this sample is an interval from this to this, yes? And the same for all elements, for, for all samples in our uh, knowledge base, in our no knowledge base. <coughs> so, when our object is here, we have one, two, three, four, five elements in our neighborhood. In one here, we have we have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, no, one, two, three, four, five elements in our neighborhood. In case in this point, we have this element in our neighborhood. But, but we, so we don't know, in fact, which samples are in our neighborhood, which should be analyzed. <coughs> we can. We can, uh, of course, calculate the dis distance. These distances between our hypothetical object in our <coughs> in our atom <coughs> to the all elements in our uh, all samples in our knowledge base, and the distances are, of course, intervals. We know that our uh, size of our our neighborhood is five. Is five. And so we can find, in this case, one element which is surely, absolutely surely, in our neighborhood. Yes, this is uh, this is element which belongs to the lower approximation of the neighborhood. And we have more than five elements which could be, which could be in our neighborhood. We don't know which one is, but. This element could be. It's a together with this. The first one is our uh, upper approximation of our neighborhood, and the rest, we know it's the distance is too uh, too high. Distance is too long, so we know that for surely these elements are outside of our neighborhood. Yes, outside. So we have to analyze only this blue and and the uh, and the uh, and the green. Uh, but uh, we know that this is, but the rest is probably is. <coughs> of course, this uh, object, this uh, uh, this uh, samples in our database, knowledge base, uh, could represent different classes, different classes. 
So, next step is a rough classification. <coughs> we have to analyze only this part of distances. These parts, there are distances in which we have not... We, we have uh, five, five elements in neighborhood, at least. One, two, three, four, five, or more, or more. Uh, <coughs> but this is af after this distance we have uh, we, we are sure that we have more than five so it is not interesting for us be because we need uh, four, uh, four elements and we analyze how many representants in a particular a particular um, intervals uh, belongs to particular classes yes mm -hmm. when for all, this is uh, eight, eight, um, eight uh, uh, intervals uh, in this uh, in this space. In for all, in for all um, uh, eight, uh, in this case, eight um, uh, intervals. Most uh, most uh, object, most uh, samples belongs to class X we know that our object belongs to class X. Yes, not all, but most of. When all, when most of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, of the um, samples in particular region belongs to the other class that uh, our analyze X, we know that uh, that analyze object uh, of course, is represented by the atom, not belong to our uh, class X. But when we have combination uh, that uh, sum of uh, uh, in in some of these uh, vector uh, uh, intervals of distance, uh, <coughs> object belongs to the uh, one class uh, into the other ones. We have no uh, certain answer, so this class. We can uh, we can uh, classify to the Bandwara uh, Bandwara region of uh, of the um, of the class X. So in fact, we don't know uh, what is proper uh, proper answer of the uh, system. Uh, this is uh, time con con uh, time time. Uh, uh, consumable uh, solution because we have to analyze on uh, all of this element for 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 uh, more uh, samples in our system this uh, this uh, intervals uh, could be uh, could be uh, many but it is uh, work uh, this is some examples uh, of uh, of uh, results and this is bad bad information when we have uh, some imperfection, uh, the number of sure answers uh, is not high. Look at this, uh, this, this part. When we have uh, information about all, uh, all um, attributes, values of all attributes, uh, we obtain a high uh, level of correct result. Uh, when we, uh, when the number of uh, uh, of uh, uh, number of available uh, attributes is less, or of the number of intervals is uh, higher, is, is higher, uh, we obtain many uh, result, uh, many result um, uh, that uh, system do not know what is the proper result. So, this uh, hybrid graph. Uh, rough hybrid uh, classification system is not a solution as a single element, but it could work in the two modes. The first mode is iterative mode. In this, when we uh, have uh, very uh, not perfect information, we can try to obtain the information. If we obtain positive and or negative re region, it's uh, it's okay. But uh, but if not we have to improving description yes and we iteratively could improving description up to obtain the satisfying result 
It's up like in the medicine. Yes, when we waking up, we feel good. Uh, it's enough information about our uh, our uh, health. Yes, but uh, when we have some problem, first we uh, test uh, t our temperatures. Next, we uh, test uh, um, some other simple uh, simple practice. Yes, uh, then uh, if we still don't know what's up what's up with our health we're going to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, doctor then we go to the hospital and so on and so on and then we're finding the proper answer about our uh, health not sometimes the simple information is enough Some, sometimes not so this iterative, iterative mode is um, is uh, i think uh, a good uh, solution and next is a uh, ensemble mode when we have the uh, ensemble of hybrid uh, system and uh, we have some form of aggregation uh, of course we have to applying special uh, methods uh, uh, for building the uh, particular uh, rough hybrid decision systems with various knowledge because this is important in this case um, um, and we obtain the ensemble mode and in this mode, we are obtaining better results than in the case of the single system. Uh, even when the, uh, the size of the intervals is quite high, uh, the number of, of uh, answers I don't know is not so, not so high. Yes? Only in the extreme situation, when the knowledge is very, very very, very uh, low has very low level uh, we obtain the information i don't know uh, make the the better 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 information um, uh, and this is uh, in case of the missing value uh, example also results are better than in case of the single uh, system so this uh, this uh, solutions are better for uh, good for for uh, working in these two uh, two mo mode, not uh, usually not not uh, single mode. Um, thank you for your attention. Um, um, I hope uh, I present the the idea. You can extend this uh, to the other systems, uh, as you know. Uh, I uh, omitted the uh, the um, the um, the questions the. Uh, the uh, proofs and then definition. Uh, if you want, uh, you can find the, uh, the the final description of this example in in, in my book uh, from uh, from the uh, beginning of this of this year. Uh, so thank you, thank you very much. First of all, thank you for a great uh, introduction to the, uh, the basic, but the most important basics of artificial intelligence. And I was thinking about just uh, one uh, uh, piece that uh, came to my mind. Uh, have you have you have you checked how dimensionality of the object influence uh, calculation? So I mean, like for example, we can have ten attributes, but if we have like fifty attributes, the calculations. Uh, just like the question from the uh, typical uh, implementation or uh, computer science, like uh, the complexity is growing very high or it's like uh, normal? Um, thank you, thank, thank you for, for your question. Um, in typical so solution, uh, the number of, uh, of dimensionality, the size of the dimensionality is uh, of course uh, higher than that in the pictures, uh, higher than that two, three, four. Um, the uh, many um, uh, database uh, for, for testing these systems um, uh, from, from the uh, repository of California uh, of um, Irving uh, um, uh, of repository of uh, University of California in the Irving uh, has uh, from um, nine to uh, to two hundred uh, hundred uh, dimensions, um, but I think in the real world it could be it could be better. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the the, the um, 
the problems with uh, with high dimensional T is uh, is the uh, good uh, good problems for for the solution because when we lost uh, um, was one from two, uh, we, we lost uh, usually a uh, proper, uh, proper answer. But when we lost uh, uh, one, two from hundreds or hundreds, um, uh, we can still obtain the, the, the result. Um, if what is important that uh, uh, even when we have uh, the, uh, the, the low level of description, um, for some, um, some uh, some cases we still obtaining the results, uh, but for the same description, uh, the same level of uh, of uh, description for other cases, we obtain the uh, uh, information that, that the level is too 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 low. So we have to improve uh, improve them. That the high dimensionality uh, is a is a good uh, uh, good topic, uh, good uh, problems for for this solution in my opinion. Questions? Okay, I have one question. Uh, we have different types of fuzzy sets, like resident sets, neutrosophic sets. What are the differences and advantages of rough sets versus these other types of fuzzy sets? Um, the rough sets, uh, the rough sets, uh, uh, in my opinion, it's not a Type of uh, type of fuzzy sets. Of course, um, it's a uh, interval uh, interval description uh, uh, usually applying. But uh, in fact, it's a different type of the um, imperfection of, of, of the knowledge uh, is, is is describing. But the fuzzy sets and uh, and by the by the by the by the rough sets, uh, because um, the the fuzzy sets describe the um, um, the uh, approximate information about some values, for example, high speed of car, uh, low level of the um, uh, of the temperatures, yes, and uh, uh, is uh, in, in, in on the beginning uh, is a method to describe the knowledge of the expert, yes. So the, the expert know that uh, if if something is low and uh, something other is is high, we should uh, do uh, something. So uh, the 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 the, um, the um, um, the, 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 the names low, high could be defined by the by the, the by the fuzzy system. But the rough sets uh, defined the, uh, the the lower of description. Uh, so it's a different point of view. Of, view. I, I, uh, of course, um, we have many uh, many proposition uh, to change the um, this this uh, this theories that the, uh, for example uh, for example uh, uh, covering uh, rough sets. Uh, it's a very interesting theory, um, uh, which extend the uh, the, the um, theory of Professor Pavlak. Um, the um, of course uh, um, interval uh, fuzzy sets like uh, like extension of the uh, of the professor Zadek um, uh, proposition uh, and so on um, uh, so so uh, there are diff different different way to to describe uh, our um, imperfect world thank you thank you we are very thankful for arriving today at our conference and I want to give you a small sign of gratitude. Uh, <laughs> I hope you will use it. Yes, of course. <laughs> because you like trial Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will use uh, it with a uh, proud. <laughs> okay, and we will thank have another keynote presentation after the coffee break. Uh, yeah, let's not forget to come back here at 12.30 after the coffee break so we can enjoy
Uh, welcome back, everyone. Um, it was very nice to see you discussing and extending the keynote topic uh, and discussing your um, personal relations and networks uh, during the coffee break. Uh, now, as it's over, it's time for our second keynote uh, speaker, uh, Professor Kim. And he is going to give a speech on violin playing robot from finger to ear. We're very excited to give you the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is my honor to be here. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, our violin playing robot. Uh, before I start my presentation, I want to briefly introduce uh, my country, Korea. Uh, Korea is uh, three times bigger than Lithuania, but uh, as you can see, the population is 18 times uh, bigger. So the density is uh, 12 times thicker. So, and the funny thing is 20% of uh, our whole population lives in one city, Seoul. So it is uh, 10 million you know, <laughs> people live in this area. So as you can see, we need a you know, very complicated metro system. And also, I want to int uh, introduce my uh, Gyeongyu University. Uh, we have three. Uh, we have three campuses: uh, Seoul, Global, and Gwangneung. And we have 21 colleges, 81 departments, and 1,423 faculties, and 32,000 uh, students, including graduates. And my department uh, is located in Global Campus, uh, city of Suwon. Uh, where is uh, one hour from Seoul? Uh, we have 31 faculties and 1,442 undergraduate students and 114 graduate students, including 37 uh, international students. Uh, this is about this is about myself. Uh, my research interests uh, human robot interaction and entertainment robot. Uh, and also, I'm a director of a Human Robot Interaction Lab. Uh, we have two PhD students and four master degree students and four undergraduate students. So, before I go further, uh, I mentioned a couple of times uh, HRI, Human Robot Interaction. So, I have to explain about this uh, before I go further. So, what HRI is, is uh, usually human give some kind of in input, command, to robot. Uh, for example, like a vision input, uh, audio input, or you know, tactile feedback input. So in, and then robot react, respond, as an output. So for example, like a position, velocity, force talk uh, output. So this is a very you know, conventional, classical definition of HRI. So in conventional approach, robot control means that based on input and kinematic model, position, velocity, and force or torque of robot are controlled like this. So uh, if you want to build a violin, violin playing robot, you have to start the kinematic model so like this. So we have to create kinematic model for joint and link basic element of a whole robot system. So when you see the, this left uh, uh, figure, you can see there's a you know uh, geometric information and material information and mass inertia or some kind of and uh, geometric properties in XML type. So based on this model description, we can easily simulate and the design our whole robot system. So based on this model description, we design six joint robot arm for Boeing, violin Boeing. And this is the schematics and this is the DH parameters. I'm not go further, you know, what DH parameter or schematics. But based on this, we can easily control our robot system so like this you know, as you expect for the robot the, this, this, this joint move precisely for the you know, with a, a predefined trajectory 
And also we use the MATLAB to control this six degree of freedom, which means a six joint robot arm for Boeing simultaneously. So this, after this effort, we can easily control our robot arm to bow. As you can see, it moves too fast, right? Very constantly. Exactly. But but you can you can feel something missing, right? So if, if, if this is a human, so you can say uh, he needs or she needs more practice. Too robotic, right? So mm -hmm. so we need more. So until until that, uh, uh, at this moment, uh, uh, what we learn is the limitation of a conventional approach. Actually, there are a lot of uh, non-linearity, uh, including compliance between bow and string, bang lash of robot arm, each joint or each link has bang lash, also, and then more, the, the, which is we don't know exactly. So we need another approach to overcome this non-linearity. So uh, we, are having, uh, we are adding compliance and first feedback and auditory feedback like this. So I'm going to explain each one of them uh, after this slide. So we want to complete this HRI uh, scheme. So before we go further, uh, we, I think we have to understand what the violin is. The fortunately, 1973, John Schlang uh, published his paper about uh, the paper, The Bold String and the Player, in the Journal of the Acoustic Society of America, about you know, violin. The, he explained that uh, there are three important <coughs> factors when playing violin, bowing force, bowing velocity, and the sound point, which is the distance between the, the violin bridge and the bow location. So among these, he said, uh, he explained that uh, the, the bowing force acts as the most important factor between the bowing velocity and the sound point. So if the bowing force is higher than the upper limit, like this here, it generates raucous noise. I will show you the sound, what the raucous sound, sound is. And if the bowing force is smaller than the lower limit here, and then it generates surface sound. Also, he mentioned that the bowing force must be controlled with more stability to maintain a clear sound. So, how can we you know, implement this theory into our robot system? First approach is we developed contact model of the violin and the, the robot arm with compliance. So we invented a passive damper system and then we implemented this as a simple mass spring model, like uh, this is a spring and mass. This simple uh, mass spring model can be implemented between here, the, the string, the bow, and robot arm and the string. So uh, it was published in you know, this journal and then, so I, I'm not going to deeper, you know, this equation. But with this first approach, and then we implement, designed and mounted a two-axis load cell, which measure the force on the bow handle to measure the bowing force. So, and then we asked real violinist to play with this equipment, equipped bow, so we can learn about proper bowing force from real violin violinist. And as you know, the violinist learn the proper bowing force, not by you know, theory or paper, but through a lot of practice, right? So we want to, we want to get those experience from the human. So this is the block diagram of the proposed violin playing robot. The, 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 if robot play, then, the, 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 for example, G-string, then this sound will be sampled at 4 kHz 
by 32-bit uh, microprocessor here, and then which is then converted to 1024 sampled FFT, fast Fourier transform, and then this information, the peak frequency and magnitude of FFT, and the two axis road cell, the, I, I already mentioned about the, this road cell measure the force, right? So these whole values are sent to PC, and then evaluate the force, and used to control Boeing robot arm. So this is the whole block diagram of our, of our uh, vi uh, violin playing robot. So, and, uh, and uh, we want to make sure that so we have some experiment about uh, force feedback. The first two graphs is, uh, is a result from a uh, result about uh, without playing without uh, the force feedback and with force feedback. The sound quality was degraded due to the instability in the sound magnitude, like a green, the, the, the lines. You can see that there is a lot of shape. Uh, and the mean frequency of played sounds should be, should be uh, the flat. Sound was increased as the change in the Boeing force increased like this. So we confirm that the force control is the important factor that determines the frequency and magnitude of sound. So we also studied about Boeing velocity. The, we experiment, uh, we analyze the performance according to the Boeing velocity, like this is the lock of the sound. You don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to hear this. <laughs> this is a locus sound, and this is the surface sound. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, but probably it's not good. So, this. easily decide oh this one is is better than the others right but but we make sure uh, this is uh, just uh, you can decide human can decide based on their experiment but, but uh, experience but the robot cannot decide it so we have to make some uh, metric system so I will explain later so so based on this we make some results uh, this figure shows the mean frequency, the blue line, and the mean magnitude, the green line, when the Boeing velocity is changed from 10 to 200 millimeter per sec, and the error rate, these graphs, uh, which is compared to the natural frequency of G strings. So based on this result, the magnitude of sound increased as the Boeing velocity increased like this. But when the Boeing velocity was higher than 130 millimeter per sec, the magnitude did not increase. It's uh, almost flat, right? And the frequency error was increased like this. So which made the sounds unstable. The violin expert verified that the sound quality is the best when the Boeing velocity is in between 90 and 110 millimeter per sec. So, what we learn from these two uh, experience, uh, experiment is the quality of play sound change according to the Boeing force and the Boeing velocity. And the experimental result show that the Boeing velocity and the sound's magnitude are related. However, if it exceeds a certain, certain value, the, the raucous noise was generated and degraded the sound quality. So also, violin expert rated that the sound is good when the Boeing velocity is between 90 to 110 millimeter per sec. Also, there is an optimal Boeing velocity that meets a, a specific Boeing force through the experiment. The next experiment is, is very interesting. Uh, we asked two violinists wear earplugs and headphones playing different music. So 
he, so they cannot listen to their own playing music. When the violinist was not able to hear his, his own play sound, the error rate went 130%, which means the auditory feedback is also very important, like the Boeing force. So based on this, the, the, the exper experiment, we add force feedback loop like this. So the violin playing robot will autonomously recognize the playing note based on frequency and then the determine the Boeing velocity and Boeing force and sound point in real time. So that is the control scheme and to implement to the real robot, we have to uh, the, the design additional hardware for violin playing robot. The left one is the audio performance analysis system. So we have to pick up the sound from the, the violin and then amplify, amplify, and then the fast free transform and then the frequency analysis uh, in real time. And the, and the, the, this system is a force measurement system and sound point measurement system. We, this is a hardware, but, but I didn't mention about how to evaluate sound quality. Because human can, can, can judge your, your play. You, know, you, are, you are very good or bad based on their experience. So we have to make some kind of sound evaluation system. So to quantitatively and objectively evaluate the sound quality of the violin for auditory feedback. So we need new sound evaluation metric system. So we, the, there is no, no sound evaluation system. So we, we developed based on the, based on, in, uh, based on <coughs> instrumental characteristics and sound evaluation results of 10 professional violin players. So we define three factors, Gaussian factor, which is the sound accuracy, harmonic factor, which is the ratio of fundamental and harmonic frequency. And the last is violin quality factor, which is the clarity of sound. So after that, we, after we developed the sound evaluation system, we asked another 10 violinists and 10 non-violinists to play. And then we measure those results based on our own metric system, GHQ evaluation method. Based on this result, we created four conditions like this, which indicate a good sound quality by the GHQ sound evaluation system. This means that the quality of sound can be verified <laughs> as good if the measurement satisfies these conditions. And so we developed another violin playing robot. And, oh, oh, sorry. We spent two years to build this whole robot system. So, this video to the YouTube, I got this comment from <laughs> Zachary Jones. He said, that sounds like people in my orchestra class, very out of tune, you know. <laughs> Harsh, but, but true. So currently we are working on, you know, the upgrade, the, our robot system, version two and version three. Currently we are, we are working on version four with uh, a commercially uh, available uh, robot arm. 
So I'm going to move on to the next topic. Uh, when, you, when you make uh, the violin playing robot, you need a left hand. Until now, I explained about right arm, right? So we need a left hand. So this is another key component for violin playing. So you know, we, we want to mimic, we want to mimic the, the human hand. So we use three axis road cell with a strain gauge. And I will explain later the, the width with a 3D model. This is our uh, first robot hand for violin playing. This is a 3D model and this is a specification. As you can see, the size is uh, uh, very similar with uh, the fem uh, male uh, hand. And it has 12 degree of freedom except thumb. You know why? You don't need the thumb to play violin, right? So you need only four fingers. So we stick with four fingers. And it weighs 500 grams. Uh, we use 12 DC geared motor and wire driven mechanism. I will explain this later. And this is a, a slide for the index finger. So it, each finger has a three degree of freedom. The first joint and second joint has one degree of freedom together because these two are dependent joint. As you, you can bend your finger, but this first joint and second joint always bend together, right? So which means it has only one degree of freedom. And the third, third joint has two degree of freedom. So, so right? This one, yeah. So two degree of freedom. So based on this, we uh, make this uh, finger. So when you see, uh, this is a motor, very small, you know, tiny motor. This motor rotate, then the wire, wire one, wheel, pulley one. So the second joint will bend. And the set at the same time, the wire two, wheel, pulley two, then the, this first joint also bend, will bend. So, and also we, what I already mentioned that we want to mimic the human, human finger and human hand, right? So at the end of the fingertip, we want to add some tactile uh, sensing capability. So we add some uh, strain gauge to detect the force and some uh, the, the feelings. So we uh, designed a binocular structure like this. It, this is a very tiny, so like a less than 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter. And then we add uh, the strain gauge along this, the binocular structure. So, which means if there is some external force, then this binocular structure will deform. So when we the check when we measure the change of this strain gauge, then we can easily measure the force, external force from the fingertips. So this is uh, uh, actually there was a uh, the movie here, <coughs> but unfortunately the codec was broken, so I have to remove this figure. But still, uh, based on this finger, we can uh, we can control this finger with. Uh, the, the feeling as a the for, the force uh, on the fingertips, the like this. The, when the, this finger press the string, you can uh, before the before uh, this finger press the string, the the green bar is is very low. But but when the the finger press the string, this green bar is, is go up. So which means the the force. <coughs> the magnitude of a force uh, is detected is increased. So, the reason why we are developing <coughs> our robot finger is carefully. Yeah, the reason why we are developing our robot finger so carefully is. <coughs> Did you catch some some? Yeah, yeah, this robot trying to make some vibrato, you know, I want to make perfect vibrato from our the robot hand. So, 
So we have to go back to human hand. So we studied the human hand, the size-wise, structure-wise, and then we redesign our robot hand based on the size of average male hand. It looks more like you know, human hand. And in our previous design, our robot finger did not have enough torque and fast frequency response to push down strings for vibrato. So we change, changed our actuator from wire driven dish motor to linear actuator like this. And at this time, for the first time, we add thumb finger like this. So also we upgrade our controller uh, from 8-bit to a 32-bit ARM processor and also this processor can be controlled by uh, wirelessly uh, through uh, Bluetooth from PC. So this oh. is a robot hand. Yes. Yeah, you can see it, it has plenty of torque, right? So we want also, yeah, I already mentioned about the fast responsible, uh, fast responsible need, uh, fast. Uh, I, 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 uh, we need a torque and responsibility, right? So to show you how our robot can respond. So our robot can, uh, our robot can, can make a switch and open it at two hertz like this, and also control sequentially finger. But unfortunately, we don't have uh, the movie about uh, the, this newly developed robot hand uh, who play, uh, which, playing, which plays a uh, violin. But to show you how, uh, to show you the, the maneuverability of our robot hand, uh, this is a simulation result. As you can see, our robot hand can handle all kinds of very various uh, object uh, like this. This is more like so. This is object. Well, actually, we add uh, some kind of camera here, so you, uh, you can see the object based on this AI marker. AI marker. Then we grab the object and then move to. Uh, uh, place to other place. So this is our current robot hand. Yeah, uh, and this is the conclusion. So uh, we are still, oh, we are still developing our uh, the violin playing robot. But, but still, this is an ongoing project, so we, this is my motivation. So, so don't in, uh, imitate the human, play better than human. <laughs> so key is more and better HRIs. So currently, uh, we are also working on EMG micromyography signal to get faster and more accurate intention recognition of human. So, yeah. <coughs> Thank you for listening. Any questions? Uh, well, it was a very interesting presentation. Thank so, uh, we all know that there was a race when the uh, computer will beat chess player. Ah, yeah. So, what's your uh, how to say, intuition when uh, the robot will beat a uh, real musician? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the 
the music, the art, the the actually there is a robot who can you know which, who can uh, draw some you know, paintings, I believe. But but still, art is a is a more like this is not from knowledge, I believe. It's a, it's more like a feeling, so based on knowledge. So the robot, you know, the robot cannot feel anything. So at this moment, I I think the 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 art entertainment robot is is far from the the autonomous car or the chess player this is a totally knowledge based system so autonomous car and chess but art is uh, beyond the knowledge based system i think some you know the when when you see the picas the, the the artwork from or Picasso. The, some people said, "Oh, it's a masterpiece," and some people said, "Oh, I, I can't understand." So, so that is not from because that is not from knowledge-based the system. So I think uh, maybe several, uh, maybe several, not hundred, <laughs> maybe twenty or thirty years later, we, we can expect the, the, the you know who can play. Violin better than human, I think. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yes. So, thank you for your talk. And uh, I have two questions. Uh, firstly, I would like to know what is uh, the advantage of this uh, robot hand in comparison with related work or previous design hand? You know? mm -hmm. And the second question is uh, what is your final goal? I mean, are you looking for designing a robot or playing instrument or do you actually uh, proceed something else? Great. Ah, I. I, I that is a very good question. First one is a robot hand. Uh, the first one is a very simple, uh, the wire-driven mechanism. So the, the wire-driven mechanism means motor has to rotate, the, so wind the, this wire, and then the robot joint will move. So the, the responsiveness is, is very low, it's very slow. So that's why I have to move to uh, the, the wire-driven mechanism to the direct uh, linear motor, the actuator. So our the newly developed uh, robot hand can respond very fast. And also uh, we, how can I say, it? not the first, not as the first one, we study the human hand very carefully. So the, right now the, our human uh, robot hand is, is very uh, human-like. Uh, that's the first uh, answer. And second one is, uh, Actually, I proposed uh, my violin playing robot to Korean government and everywhere to get f fund because it costs a lot of money. You mean that half half a million? I spent half a million dollars to build uh, this whole robot system. Every time I have to add something because I cannot propose same proposal to to Korean government every year, right? So I have every year I add something. So the, the, the last the proposal was I want to teach, I want my robot can teach human. It's, it's, and the, the first one is uh, mimic the, the human. And then the next propo proposal was I want to make my robot to play better than human. And the last proposal was, I want my robot to teach human. To, to do that, you have to understand the, the, the sounds from the human, right? And then the robot has to the, the, uh, decide which part should be improved by human, right? The, the Boeing force or velocity or some kind of position or something like that. So that is my ultimate goal. So uh, actually, soon I'm going to uh, put my robot, uh, violin, play, uh, violin playing robot into the stage with human. And next one is uh, teach. Yes. Not about learning because you have the problem sometimes with these robots, right? With these hands. Yes. So, 
how do you know how to program these things? What should be the right movements? Ah, uh, this human hand. Yes, yes. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, the next question, because nowadays everybody is talking about reinforcement learning. Yes. Actually, the idea was. Yes. So yes. Yes. That, that is another very good question. Actually, I didn't mean that when I explained about HRI scheme, there is a the first one is a vision. So actually, we use a vision information from the human robot hand. Human hand, the, we recorded the, uh, the the violinist, the the human hand uh, hand movement of a violinist, and then based on this information. We uh, pre-planned, uh, pre-programmed the, the, the basic movement, and then, uh, but, but that is it. it uh, with the, uh, only with that, uh, if we use only that information, that is very uh, not accurate because uh, if you mimic your maybe violin teacher's the movement, but, but but your hand and your body is totally different from your teacher's. The, the body, so you you cannot copy his movement or her movement directly. So you have to adjust your movement, pre-planned movement. So so that's why we add force feedback or auditory feedback to adjust those the, the difference. So and then uh, you mentioned about the, the reinforcement learning. So uh, actually, currently I'm. How can, how can I say? I, I learn. I'm, I'm, I'm reading the, the machine learning book again <laughs> to, to adapt the reinforcement learning or the deep neural network to our system. So, right. yes. So, soon. Yes. Does it matter which kind of, if you have a really cheap violin versus a Stradivarius, does it make any difference? At this time, the the sounds, <laughs> sounds is almost same, but uh, actually, uh, when you see my slide, actually I switch from conventional classic violin into electric violin, because uh, when we use uh, the classic violin, uh, we have to pick up those sounds with some kind of the sounds pickup system like amplifier, uh, the the mic and amplifier and the AD convert, uh, analog to digital <coughs> converter. So it makes a lot of noise. So it is difficult to analyze. So we uh, uh, currently we are using electric violin. So very not that expensive, yeah. cheap one. <laughs> yes. So how fast can the uh, robot can go? Uh, this? Fast, yeah. yeah, it's a, it's not that fast, <laughs> honestly. To be honest, uh, I I I uh, showed the the two hertz uh, control uh, the uh, result, but that is not enough actually. The human can move much faster than two hertz, so uh, we have to upgrade uh, our robot hands. But but the linear actuator, the when we using linear actuator. I think that is the, the maximum performance, I think. So if we want to go further, we have to change the whole mechanism. So at this time, we are uh, currently we are working on the, the, this 2 hertz uh, robot hand. So, so we are going to play only slow uh, the, the music. Yes. yes. Let me tell you a joke about violin. Yes. From Midwest, yes. bought himself a ticket to a concert at Carnegie Hall oh. in New York City. Yes. It was his first visit to New York City, couldn't find a place. And he's browsing on the streets <coughs> of New York, and finally he found a violinist. He's approaching him and asking, Excuse me, how to get to Carnegie Hall? The response is practice, practice. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is a very good closing remarks <laughs> for my presentation. Yeah, <coughs> we need more practice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for coming to the conference.
a small gift of gratitude to you. I hope you will use it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Photo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor, for your very interesting and exciting presentation. Uh, so some practical stuff once again. I would like to remind everyone that uh, we're leaving for the cultural program at 3 p.m. sharp. Uh, there will be two buses outside the hotel. Uh, so please don't be late. Uh, we have to be punctual and Rathina would like to do that. Um, and now I would like to invite you to have uh, lunch. It's uh, going to start um, at 1.30 or maybe we can try to see if there's uh, food served uh, right now. It's um, in the restaurant downstairs. Um, and yeah, don't be late. Let's meet at 3 p.m. outside the hotel. Enjoy your lunch.